Pet Shop, Rob from Woodsley Summercraft here. It's been ages since I've put a video out and I apologise to anybody that's been following me or wanting to see me make a video but it's just uh, I've been back to work, super busy and I just haven't been in the mind frame to uh, to produce videos and put them out. Sometimes you go through phases of, of just not wanting to put a video out but um, I just got some wood yesterday and I thought pretty interesting piece of wood, bit of history, and I thought, why not share it? So let me show you what I've got. So this is one of 13 pieces that I picked up from an old fellow that apparently cut them up with his father about 30 years ago. This particular piece is about 31 inches long, and it's about 13 inches wide right here through the crotch. Um, what I intend to do, I've already marked out a circle here for a bowl blank, which is about, it's about 11 and a half, 12 inches around. And then what I'll end up doing is make a couple of spindle blanks out of this, because there's a crack down the middle. Same thing here, there's a crack down the middle, so maybe a couple of spindle blanks. And probably the same with the, uh, the main trunk down here. There's a bit of a crack there, so I'll probably make a couple of spindle blanks from that as well. He originally had this with the idea of making uh, a gun stock for... Uh, a rifle. He showed me a couple that he had. It was the first time I ever purchased wood from a fella that was holding a shotgun. Okay, so let's just spin this around. It's about three inches thick. Let's take a look. Yeah, three and a half inches thick roughly. This is the other side. You can see the crotch feathering is all the way through here. There is some nasty cracks in there but uh, it is very dry, it's been cut 30 years, stored in a barn so I think it should be good to go right ahead and turn it. So I'm going to cut off the excess with a bandsaw and then cut the circle out on the bandsaw and then we'll get it on the lathe ready to turn a bowl. This particular bowl is going right back to the fella that I got the wood from. So as with any blank that you process yourself, especially when you've got cracks in it and imperfections, uh, the way it was cut, there's a little rough bit there. We're going to lose some of the thickness of it. It's approximately three and a half inches thick. Grain's pretty tight, so it's a very old piece of wood. I've got a nice crotch section right through here on this side. Not so much on this side. So this is going to be my bottom of the bowl, the underside of the bowl. I'm hoping that I can turn that away and if I can't I'm just going to fill it with um, with black CA or something like that to uh, to kind of hide it. Um, okay so let's get the faceplate mounted on this side and we'll get it mounted on the lathe and we'll get this thing turned. So I went ahead and put all eight screws in. These are number 10 screws with a black Robertson head, uh, number 3 Robertson head, that's Canadian. Um, so it's securely mounted to the faceplate. It's quite a heavy piece of wood. It's, uh, it's got some weight to it for sure. So we'll get that on the lathe. It should be good. And I always tend to bring the tailstock up for extra support, especially initially when you first start turning because uh, it's as out as round as it possibly could be at this point. Although it's not too bad. Can't be too safe turning turning wood. Always bring your speed down when you put a fresh piece of wood on the lathe. Turn the lathe on, turn it on. That's pretty balanced. Pretty happy with that. So uh, I'll bring the speed up. 
where it starts to wobble and then just back it off just a little bit and then I can start turning. So having removed the chainsaw marks from this side, the bowl is going to be approximately three inches. So I've removed about half an inch to three quarters of an inch of wood to get rid of that the chainsaw marks. Now I have to shape the underside of the bowl to something that's pleasing and we need to try and get rid of this crack. It doesn't go in very deep so that's a good thing. So I don't think we're going to have an issue getting rid of that. Um, and then I'm going to put a mortise on the underside I think on this particular bowl. So I've been thinking about shape, what I want to do for the finishing shape and I think what I want to do is I want to thin this quite a lot here but put a bead on here which continues over the top. So I'm going to manufacture a bead right here and then thin this down to a base and we'll have a mortise in the center. So this is actually going against the grain so what I want to do now is come around here and bring it, go with the grain.
I had to take quite a lot more wood than I initially thought I was going to have to to get rid of those nasty cracks but I still have a couple of issues with pits here there's uh, two spots there, a spot there and a spot there so that's four areas that I need to take care of so I'm going to do that with a combination of sawdust and uh, thin CA. We've got some thin sawdust here from this from this blank. <sighs> Hopefully we can get it in the hole and a little bit of thin CA. Now this can stain your wood so uh, sometimes it gives you problems when you put CA on a piece of wood in one spot but we'll deal with it. So you can already start to see the crotch section which runs across the entire underside and with any luck we'll have that on the entire of the inside as well. So uh, I've now got this bottom piece so that it's uh, concave so that it won't rock around on the table. Now what I need to do is mark and cut my mortise. So I'm using the medium set of jaws for my easy wood chuck and I'm just going to mark it now. Should be about there. Exactly. Right there, that is my my mortise. So I'll go ahead and make my mortise now. basic shape that I've decided to stick with. I'm just going to go ahead and sand this now. I'm probably going to start at 60 just to clean these areas here up and work my way to uh, 320 maybe 400 before I go ahead with my uh, finish. This has now been sanded to 400 grit and I use the uh, feed and wax. Just helps eliminate a lot of the flying dust. I've got a dust collection system right here so it is sucking the dust away but it's, you still get an awful lot of dust when you're sanding this stuff especially when you've got to deal with any little issues that you had to deal with super glue or a little bit of tear out on the end grain it's definitely worth taking your time especially with the lower grits to take care of those issues once they're gone then uh, sanding becomes easier as you work your way up through the grits but make sure you get rid of those problem areas with your lowest grit and uh, they won't come back to haunt you when you put your finish on. So I'm quite happy with the way the bottom side is looking right now, that crotch section all the way through the center, looking pretty nice, quite happy with that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put a finish on this. Um, I'm gonna use denatured alcohol to remove anything that's on there right now. Then I'm gonna do the usual finish with Myelin Cellulose Based Sanding Sealer, Yorkshire Grit Original and Microfine and then Hampshire Sheen Gloss followed by Hampshire Sheen Microcrystalline Wax. So just a little bit of uh, denatured alcohol on a paper towel just to pull off any dirt and residue that's remaining on the wood. As you can see all that will come out. You don't want that under your finish And that's got the majority of that off so now I can go ahead and seal that just make sure to give it a good old coat especially in the uh, end grain areas let it soak up as much as it wants and you'll get a better finish
I see some guys applying this with a paintbrush. That's probably a good idea. I should probably do that. Maybe with my next can. When I open up the next can, maybe I'll do that. Put it in a container with a paintbrush. It's just easier to put on, I think. So once you've let that dry for a good amount of time, you want to take a scouring pad and just denib it, get rid of all the little streaks. Because this is not your finish, this is just sealing the wood ready for your finish. So although it's nice and shiny right now, it's going to go dull again as I denib it. And this is the preparation for Yorkshire grit, which is an abrasive paste which is going to bring it to an even higher equivalent grit of sanding without all the traditional sanding requirements of using sandpaper. I think everybody knows that now though. Yorkshire grit's the bomb. It's great stuff. Okay, so that is denibbed. It's looking good. So what I'll do now is I'll go straight to Yorkshire Grip. And this is my pot here with the product saver in it from uh, Temple Boy Turnings over there in Ireland. Now basically this is, yes it stops the shavings getting in but it also limits the amount of product you use. Because you don't need to put a lot on. You just need to cover the entire surface with a light coating. Okay, and in slow speed, I'll start, start working that in. Just in slow speed so it doesn't spit in my face too much. I don't like it when it does that. and you can hear it cutting. I'm going to start to bring the speed up now. I've got this in forward. You don't need to change direction. It's always better to run forward when you can because then the uh, faceplate doesn't unwind itself. Okay, moving on to a fresh piece of paper towel. I'm going to do it twice. I've been doing that lately and you get even better results by applying a second coat of the original. I want a really good finish on this because it's a gift for the fella that I bought this wood from. His granddaughter is a friend of my son, Cole, and the fella's daughter works with my wife. And after all, he did have a shotgun with him. I didn't tell you that. When I showed up to buy the wood from him, he stood there with a shotgun in his hand but it wasn't for the reason you might think, it was because he uh, he made the gun stock for that out of Warner. So he wanted to show me. Okay, bringing the speed down again. Start working it in second time. You don't have to do this, you just do this if you want a better finish. There's no harm in doing it twice. Start bringing the speed up. I'm only going at about 7 800 RPM, 750 RPM, because anything above 800, I've noticed this is wobbling because the front side of the bowl is still out of balance. Now I'm going to move on to the Yorkshire Grip Microfine. Same thing, it has a product saver in it. Push it down a little bit, gives you just enough to coat.
coat the surface. Now you really don't need to do this unless you really want a good finish, unless you want an excellent finish. Um, this is going to give you the ultimate finish. As long as you go through all the steps, you've got to do the sanding properly. If you've got any tear out, you need to go back and deal with that. In the past, I've done items and I've kind of ignored a little bit of tear out and it just comes back and haunts you because you've got to stare at it now. Well, I don't have to stare at this because it's not going to be mine. Okay, I'm going to bring the speed back down. Start working it in. This piece of walnut is absolutely beautiful. So the fellow was saying he reckons it was a couple of hundred years old when they cut it. So that's an old piece of wood. Been sitting in his barn for 30 years. Him and his grandfather cut the tree down and they cut the, some crotch sections up. I guess his father worked for the city of Windsor and the tree was cut down for some reason and uh, he ended up bringing some pieces home and him and his son they cut the piece up and that was 30 some years ago and uh, it's going to be my pleasure to hand this piece to him knowing that he, him and his dad cut this down all those years ago and it's been sat in his barn and now it can sit on his table with some apples in it or some candy okay I'm going to move on to a fresh piece it's always worth going back a step if you have an issue so if there's an issue with a streak that you can't get out or some tear out that you missed it's worth going back and deal with it in the first place and you won't have to okay fresh piece of paper towel and I think that is ready for Hampshire Sheen Gloss Is looking very nice okay so I'm gonna get the Hampshire sheen gloss now if I can get the can opener in there okay open that and we'll get some of that on the surface of the whole bowl thin layer and let that dry so apply it and then leave it for a few minutes let it vap off, let it go dry and tacky. This will give you that durable finish that you want, a wax finish, but it's durable because of the, uh, the hard waxes that are in there, the canuba and the microcrystalline wax and the oils to bring out the luster. There's definitely luster in this wood. Okay, I'm going to leave that for a few minutes and let it dry. Okay, that's now been a few minutes. I'll take the same paper towel that I applied it on with and uh, start buffing it in. Finishing gloss. Looking very nice. I'm going to apply Hampshire Sheen microcrystalline wax. This, this is a finishing wax. It's going to basically protect the finish that we've got. So I'll apply that with a clean paper towel. Very thin layer. You don't need a lot of this. Same process. Apply it, let it dry, and then buff it off. 
Make sure it's over the whole piece, nice thin layer. And let the solvents vap off and then buff it. And that will be the underside finished. Okay, that's been a couple of minutes. It's gone dry now, so I'm going to buff that in. The microcrystalline wax. That will give us our fingerprint proof finish that we want and protect that shine. Now, you want to make sure you burnish this in properly. Otherwise, it will stay tacky. So I'm going to move on to a fresh piece of paper towel make sure nothing comes off on the towel and then I'll know it's finished. Piece of wood over there knocking around. I think we're just about there. Yep, I'm happy with that. We'll get this turned around and we'll come back and we'll hollow this bowl out.
basic bowl shape that I want right behind me but uh, as you can see there's a lot of mess a lot of shavings on the floor and it gets everywhere so uh, what I'm gonna do now is do a quick sweep up clean up and then I'll go ahead and start sanding this down to the finish that I'm looking for hopefully there's no ridges I'll make sure that I get rid of those if they occur during the sanding process so let's get cleaned up and then we'll be right back to sand sanded to 400 grit and I used the uh, Howard's Feen wax uh, basically to wet the wood so that it wasn't kicking out as much sawdust uh, because it does kick out a lot of sawdust. I started at 60 grit to make sure I got rid of any tool marks or uh, any tear out. Uh, you're always going to get some tear out when you've got wood like this with end grain and wood going in every single direction because you can't cut with the grain you're cutting against the grain in certain areas so 60 grit all the way down to 400 I went so and I used the Howard's feed and wax now what I'm going to do is clean this off with denatured alcohol and go through the same finishing process that I used before with the sanding sealer the Yorkshire grit and the Hampshire sheen products so get all the dirt out of that wood. This will pull the oil back out of the wood. Keep doing that until it's completely clean. And it dries pretty quickly. So again, with your 60 grit or your lowest grit, make sure there's no tear out. Because as you uh, increase your grit, you just won't get rid of those marks. Okay, I'm happy with that. What I'm going to do now is apply the Mylan's sanding sealer. Again, applying it liberally, letting the wood soak it up. I didn't end up putting anything in those pits. I think uh, they're not that bad actually, so I decided just to leave them. These, these little pith marks here are okay. So that is now dried, and I'm going to denib it to get rid of any little streaks that are in there. Um, and basically, it's going to go dull again, just in slow speed just to remove any residue that comes right off but the wood will be sealed and that's all I'm trying to do at this point so now it's time to get the Yorkshire grit coated on the inside and, and the rim nice to see this when it's finished. I think the uh, cross section is really going to pop when it's finished. And the chatoyance and the movement in this I've already seen as I've been working with it. Making sure to get that rim so there's no marks on it. Transitioning from the underside to the top side sometimes can be a challenge to new turners especially when you remount it and maybe the wood has moved or something like that okay in slow speed so it doesn't spit Yorkshire grit at me <laughs> I 
and again I'll do this process twice then the microfine Okay, bringing the speed up a little bit now. Seven hundred RPM. I'm now going to move on to the uh, microfine, Yorkshire grit microfine, which will get it even smoother. And slow speed, start working that in. Increasing the speed. on to a fresh towel to remove all the residue. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm going to apply Hampshire Sheen Gloss now and go through the same finishing process. This is the foundation and this is the finish. So with a clean paper towel again, I will apply a thin layer over the inside of this bowl. Okay, so it's been drying now for a few minutes and uh, it's ready, it's gone tacky. So now it's ready to buff this in. I've got the speed at about 700. Increase it a little bit, 800. Let's take a look at that. Now you want to look out for any streaks that you might have. If you've got streaks, it's more than likely the uh, sanding sealer. Um, I don't have any streaks, but if you do, that's usually what it is. Because uh, the sanding sealer can melt. If you've got too much that you left on the surface, that can melt and streak so you gotta watch out for that before you go ahead with your finish that's why you've got to denib the sanding sealer and remove the surface sanding sealer okay so that is looking really nice I'm really happy with that um, I am gonna put one more coat of this on the Hampshire Sheen Gloss and then we'll move on to the final coat of my crystalline wax and this bowl is basically done 
I just need to get the bottom signed and this can go off to the fella hopefully this time he doesn't greet me with a shotgun double barreled shotgun from the 1800s and there is the finished bowl it's 11 and a half inches in diameter by three inches deep it's got a little bit of a pedestal at the base and the bead on the rim which goes over to the to the inside and it's got that beautiful piece of cross section that runs all the way through the inside and also on the underside all the way through a uh, very beautiful piece of wood although I had to lose quite a bit of it um, the wood often will tell you what shape you can get out of it and what size piece you can get out of it so uh, that's it I'm calling this shotgun what shall I call this for a two barrel shotgun bowl walnut two barrel shotgun bowl shotgun walnut two something like that anyway um, the name will be in the description and everything else but above and below somewhere anyway <laughs> okay that's enough of that I've talked too much uh, Neil winter mute is the guy that I got this wood from and uh, this is coming home to you my wife will drop it off because I daren't stop by again you might shoot me the next time so I hope you really enjoy your bowl I'll leave a couple of photographs at the end so you can get a good look at it but uh, I hope you like this project if you did please like subscribe Hit that bell notification for when I eventually get another video out because it's usually uh, few and far between lately. I've been busy in the yard, it's summertime and all that good stuff and I'm back to work. So what can I say? There's priorities unfortunately. I wish I could do this full time, I really do. Anyway, you take care. I'll see you in the next wood turning project. Take care now, bye.